Hey guys, so welcome to Great Learning. Now, data analysis is such an important aspect of any business or any individual or even enterprise grade business out there, right? When you think about it, data analysis is one of these fields that can see itself fit extremely well for all the other domains as well, right? Think about sales, think about logistics, think about analyzing how a machine learning algorithm be, uh, behaves. Think about, uh, you know, just looking at things such as analyzing tomorrow's weather right so there's so many different things uh, where uh, analysis comes into the picture and there's various types of analysis as you might already know it in fact multivariate analysis is one of the most popular types of analysis that is out there and in this course we are going to take a look at understanding what it is how it can be used and of course uh, we can go on to check out a practical demonstration through which you guys can understand all of this better If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. This is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from Great Learning. And of course, guys, if you enjoy this video, show us some love and do like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, right? So make sure you share this video with your friends, colleague and everyone who can make use of it. And at the end of it, make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and I'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments. Now, let's quickly take a look at the agenda for the session. Now, when you take a look at the course agenda for multivariate analysis, we are going to be starting out by taking an introduction to understanding what data analysis is in its basic terms, right? Because once you have an understanding of what analysis is, then you'll be very curious to find out what are some of the various types of data analysis that we have out there. Now, in these types, we are going to be dividing it down to the most simplest level. We're going to be assessing, we're going to be analyzing a lot of different things with respect to the various types of it and as soon as we finish the types of data analysis the right next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be jumping into the heart of the topic wherein we will start out by understanding what multivariate analysis actually is right now once you have a picture of what it is once you have slight clarity knowing oh okay so this is what multivariate analysis is you will be very curious to understand fine i know what it is now but why do we use it what is the primary objective of using multivariate analysis, right? So we're going to take a look at all of that. And once you understand what it is, where it is used and all of that, you'll be very curious to say, hey, okay, now what are some of the various techniques that I can go on to use now, now that I know the objective and what uh, multivariate analysis is, right? So of course, we're going to have to take a look at the uh, techniques as well. And once you understand the techniques and everything there is to know about, uh, uh, you know, having a good introduction to multivariate analysis, you will be a person who will say, okay, so what are some of these advantages of multivariate analysis that gives it an edge over the other types of analysis, right? We're going to have to take a look at that and of course we will. And lastly, as you can see, practical implementation in Python, as always guys, anything with respect to data analysis, anything with respect to, uh, you know, performing any sort of analysis, right? It will always help you if you always take a practical example to, you know, go along with your theoretical learning and to make sure that at the end of the day, you're applying whatever it is uh, that you guys are studying and reading and understanding right that way it will help you retain it better and with the help of a demo you will understand exactly what it is to actually go on to perform multivariate analysis right so i hope all of you all are excited as me uh, for this course let's get started with the first item on the agenda which is introduction to data analysis now ladies and gentlemen data analysis is something which is fantastic because uh, you might not know it's called data analysis but i can guarantee you one thing you have used it in your life a lot of different times with things which you might have never thought you would have used data analysis for. Let me give you a good example here. Now, think about a situation where there's a new TV show that is coming or let's just say season 5 or season 6 of some TV show is becoming super popular. Uh, they dropped a trailer or a teaser or something. The entire world, as you know it, now that everyone's connected via social media, everyone will be talking about it. People will be going bonkers about it, right? When you think about it. So, uh, what do you do when you see a new TV show which says, people are saying, oh, this is the best TV show I've ever watched. There is nothing that comes close to this. When people are raving about it 
and when people are talking highly of it, what do you do? Because here is what I do, right? Once I figure out something is extremely popular and it is like, uh, you know, growing at a lightning pace, I am sure there is something in that show that is making people want to go and check it out, right? So I'll, I'm curious now. What I, I, I believe is, hey, okay, so if a lot of people are talking about it, there is something that the show is doing right. So let me find out if, whatever the show is doing if it is in my liking or not now let's be honest when it comes to movies and tv shows we have our own choices right now for example me i love absolutely what watching stand-up comedies or if it's any new tv show or something i usually prefer comedy or anything on the lines of that right now you might be a person who says hey i am into thriller and sci-fi tv shows and all of that so what do you do you quickly go to google you, you read more about it right you are trying to understand what it is at its core level. You want to do research. You want to do, uh, uh, you know, you want to read some reviews on uh, IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, all of these review places to see what people are telling about it. You'll watch the trailer yourself. You'll talk to a couple of friends. Now, what is this entire process that you're doing? You're trying to explore more into the topic, right? Now, look at your screen. It says, what is EDA? EDA stands for Exploratory Data Analysis. And ladies and gentlemen, to a good amount of extent, you guys were doing exploratory data analysis there because you knew what the problem was. The problem was you don't have enough information about the TV show. Now, you know how to solve it is actually by watching the TV show. But before committing to watching the TV show, you realize saying, let me do a little more research. Let me do a bit of analysis analysis to see if this TV show is for me or not and eventually you did everything that you would do and then probably you either watched it or you didn't watch it right so taking a look at understanding this in the data analysis perspective that we're taking a look at right uh, it's basically you having a problem you have certain data and you know that the data can be used to solve the problem but as it is if you just look at the data it will not really give you any sort of insights it will not give you patterns just by looking at it right you have to perform some investigations on it you have to work on it deeper now if i give you a single brick a, a, you know a couple of bags of sand and a bag of cement and tell you hey build a house right? If I just say build a house, do you think the house is going to be built? Not really. You're going to need people. You're going to need some process further to actually use all the raw materials to build. This data analysis is that raw material where you're actually investigating, right? That is very important for you all to understand. Now, there are so many things that is hidden in data that you will not realize as soon as you look at it with the naked eye. You can look at data with your eye and say, okay, well, there's not really anything that I can tell. There's a lot of uh, rows, a lot of columns and you know we have certain data and you can probably guess what might be happening guess right now i can guess that it will rain tomorrow here in bengaluru but what how sure am i i'm just guessing i'm just saying it it doesn't mean it has to happen but that is where data analysis is very different here when you make outcomes when you predict something based on your data when you're analyzing data and you say here is the result of my analysis basically what you're saying is hey i know that this might happen tomorrow here is the data to prove that it will happen tomorrow right now there you're not guessing anymore you have data ready at your hand to back everything that you have to say right now if i say hey tomorrow it's going to rain because this is the precipitation factor these are the clouds that's how it's moving around india you can expect a ton of clouds to be on bangalore tomorrow and there's a very good chance it might rain now when i say it this way you'll be like oh okay it might rain correct rather than just me saying tomorrow it'll rain. Now think about it. Now this exact small example that I gave you, uh, you know, this kind of an approach to understanding data is what is making it a key part of millions and billions and trillions of dollars worth of businesses today, right? Everyone around you, I bet everyone right from the grocery stores near you all the way to someone, uh, you know, in a very big company, maybe like Google or Facebook or something. These guys are using data analysis on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, not everyone is sitting and working with algorithms, creating models and all of that, but they are in their own way performing some sort of analysis, right? Now, you, you closely observed what I just said, some sort of analysis. So what are the various, uh, you know, types of analysis that one can go on to perform, uh, you know, when we're discussing about data analysis, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand that there are three very important types of data analysis out there. It is not just multivariate analysis. We have univariate analysis, we have bivariate analysis, and we have multivariate analysis as well. 
Now, with respect to univariate analysis, it is very simple. What does uni stand for? All right, uni stands for one. Uni stands for single. So whenever you are assessing and analyzing a single variable which will have an impact on the outcome, that is when you, you, you uh, that is when we use univariate analysis. Now, when you have to analyze two variables which will tell you which will have an effect, it will have a say on the outcome. That is when you use bivariate analysis. One variable done. Two variable done. What if there is a case where we have more than two variables that we will have to analyze and assess? Again, you figured it out by now, right? It's multivariate analysis, which is basically uh, used whenever you have to work with two or more variables. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do pause for a second here and try to understand and see if you can find any example cases of where you might have used univariate analysis, bivariate analysis, and multivariate analysis, right? If you're just analyzing one thing to see if it is right or wrong, that's univariate. Now, if you have two objects or something that you'll have to assess to see towards a common outcome, that is bivariate analysis. Now, multivariate analysis, again, there's a lot of factors that are involved, right? In fact, let us discuss these examples. Univariate analysis. When someone says, hey, analyze the change in the height of a particular person, in majority of the cases, how do you think it goes, right? So when they're young, the height is pretty much very less. And as they go uh, uh, in age, uh, the age of 18, 20, 25, 26, they reach certain age and they tend to plateau at that age for a really long time. So it's a linear growth, right? It's not like one person grew 10 feet in a day. That really doesn't happen. So it's only one variable that you have to assess to give someone the height, right? You just have to assess, uh, measure them and tell them, hey, this is one of the variables. This is one of the uh, uh, you know important things that will help you get to the outcome. Simple. Now, if I say, hey, analyze the change in someone's age, right? Age is still a single factor, right? You don't have to consider anything else apart from uh, if you know the person's age. That is all is, let's just say, required for the analysis result. Univariate analysis says that if you only want to assess and analyze age, or not just age, this is an example, uh, this is what will lead to having one variable deriving and helping you get towards your outcome. This is univariate analysis. Now take a look at bivariate analysis, right? Bivariate analysis is fantastic because here you will be taking a look at understanding two parameters at a time. Let me tell you. Uh, so think about sport preferences in our country, right? So uh, not just in our country, it's just, just a hypothetical example out here. Uh, whenever you're thinking about sport preferences, it is very common that, you know, guys would love to play, uh, uh, you know, cricket, guys would love to play football on the national and the international leagues. And women see themselves, uh, uh, you know, mostly in archery. Uh, when you take, take a look at all these track and uh, field events, which are again, extremely difficult in my opinion, right? So if you say, hey, what are the sport preferences? for male population and female population look at this you have two uh, things that you'll have to assess and out uh, you, you have to assess your outcome based on right so male population they will have their own choices they will have their own uh, sport that they like now if someone asks you a question saying hey uh, at that point of time in 2005 what were the uh, details of uh, you know the male population what games were they playing can't you answer that? Yes, you can. If the same question was asked in the case of female population, again, you would have uh, analyzed a lot of different sports to get to the conclusion to say, hey, females in the year 2006 were playing these many games. Simple, right? So you can do it. Another example for bivariate analysis is the GRE score based on your ages. Now, uh, when someone tells you, hey, I want you to take all the GRE scores of all the students who have written the exam, uh, uh, divided based on their age. Now, you have two things that you'll have to filter something based on. First of all, you have to pick up all the GRE scores. Next, you have to pick up all the age of the, those particular candidates who have uh, written that examination. And eventually, then you can perform some analysis. There are two inputs, there are two variables you're assessing here, the score and the age at the same time, right? So this is bivariate analysis. When you take a look at multivariate analysis, you have got the game by now, right? So you will have to have more than two variables to actually check if a person, uh, uh, you know, to, to check if an outcome is being achieved there or not. In the example that you can see here, it says diabetes prediction using insulin, uh, age, BFI, etc. Right? Now, in fact, we are going to take a look at a practical demonstration on the same particular topic. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic demo because here, uh, just think about the real life diabetes uh, situation, right? Uh, uh, there is never only one reason that will lead to diabetes, right? There's many factors. There's age, there's genetics, there's insulin, there's your diet, which matters a lot. There's your exercise habits, uh, you know, your blood pressure. 
there's a million things there are so many variables and if those variables fall into place there's a very good chance that you might have diabetes right so this is again a common problem in today's world and we are going to be using the power of machine learning to actually assess and analyze and perform multivariate analysis on it because at the end of the day we will know that hey diabetes does not just depend on one factor it depends on multiple factors so let's have each of those factors let's perform some analysis on them right so guys these are the various types of data analysis that we have out there now coming to the heart of the topic what is multivariate analysis right we took a look at examples we understand that we're going to have to have more than uh, two variables to work on it right uh, again i can give you more examples on multivariate analysis because as i told you multivariate analysis unless you search for it in your real world you would not know you've used it think about it right multivariate thinks about talks about always making use of multiple variables at a time the same uh, weather prediction example i spoke to you at the start if i'm just telling you tomorrow it's going to rain it's an absolute guess right it can be the sunniest day in the country tomorrow but what if i tell you hey tomorrow it's going to rain because i have assessed these many these many parameters for example the uh, rain might depend on humidity it might depend on pollution it might depend on precipitation it might depend on a ton of different other factors right all these numerical factors or categorical factors that will lead to that outcome of it raining uh, tomorrow now when that is the case you have to be uh, you know you have to understand for a fact that it's not just one thing that lead to it there's multiple things and weather prediction is actually a very good example uh, for all of you all to actually understand multivariate analysis right now uh you might be a person who might be saying at this moment of time okay i know uh, uh, what multivariate analysis is but where is it popularly used well we're going to be discussing a section just for that but let me quickly give you some key pointers out here right now whenever you go to an analyst and say hey what are the sales figure of my company now you might be a person who might have just opened a brand new chocolate uh, company you're selling chocolates right uh you will know that during this time september october november december uh this is when people usually tend to sell a lot of chocolates right because again it's christmas time it's new year time there's halloween there's always something coming around uh, these particular days so you might be uh, you might be a person saying hey i want to use the last 6 month data that i have to try to see if i can predict what my sales will be during christmas or even better i'm going to give you the data from last year's christmas sales and can you guess how many customers that uh, i can expect this year so that i can order so many chocolates for the customers right so when you think about it you can ask any sort of questions where probably 20 years back you could never answer those right and now you can not only just guess out guess it out or something like that you can have data to prove everything that you're saying now it is very easy to say hey you know get 10 chocolates how do you know it's 10 chocolates right you cannot just say this is the factor which might be affecting the sales of any particular company out there there's multiple aspects there's multiple variables there are so many dependencies uh, which will lead to a situation such as this right so it is very very important multivariate analysis you have to understand ladies and gentlemen is a very important part of uh, this uh, domain that we call as exploratory data analysis or eda so the next time anybody speaks about eda understand that multivariate analysis is a very important has a very important role uh, to play in that right now once you understand where it is popularly used you will be very curious to take a look at knowing uh, the objective of multivariate analysis we saw what it is we saw where it is used we saw to a certain degree how it can be used and all of that as well but what is the overall objective why are we doing multivariate analysis Now ladies and gentlemen multivariate analysis is basically done because of the following objectives you see on your screen right now the first uh, point says data reduction now whenever you are performing analysis whenever you are using multiple variables to analyze something Uh, you know you can actually come to a point where you can reduce your initial data because you might have had it in better categories or you might be simplifying a very very complex data set into something really simple and at the end of the day you're doing that here's the advantage you're doing that without having to sacrifice any valuable information now if i tell you hey here is this large chunk of data here is this here is the same chunk of data but in smaller size you might be the first person to say hey did you remove any data to make it smaller 
Well, with the case of this type of data reduction, you can reduce the size of the data without having to sacrifice something which will add meaning to the whatever problem it is that you're trying to solve. This is critical for you guys to understand, right? Take a look at the next point. It says data organization. Now, whenever you're trying to perform multivariate analysis, it never is the case that, hey, look, these two uh, parameters are the only reasons why this might happen in, in that particular way. No, there might be many cases where you'll actually have to go on to sort your data or group your data based on certain characteristics for you yourself to get some visibility to say, hey, okay, now, uh, you know, we can go on to, now that I've grouped all this data, I have a clarity of what variable has what effect on the data and now I can sit and perform multivariate analysis, right? So uh, an objective is to actually reduce the data to its simple form. Another objective is to actually organize the data and here is a very, very important one, data interdependency. Think about it. If we are talking about multivariate analysis, you're basically trying to understand the various relationships that exists between all these variables that you have out there, right? Now, uh, think about this particular situation, age and fitness, how does it affect diabetes, right? Now, as and when your age progresses, uh, you know, when you're 50 or when you're 55, you might not be able to run like an 18 year old kid, like a 16 year old kid, right? So your fitness might come down slightly while your age is going up. Now, there is a relationship in itself. As you progress in your age, there's a very good chance your uh, performance in terms of uh, exercises, in terms of fitness, in terms of working out might slightly come down because again, uh, in general, we say, hey, it's an age factor, but it's a direct comparison between age and, uh, you know, your level of fitness. And when we say it in conversation, you don't realize that it's, again, uh, the interdependency that we're talking about. But now that you understand this, the next time you look at situations like that, I'm sure you're going to be thinking about data interdependency, right? Fantastic. The last point says hypothesis construction. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hypothesis constructions are very, very important because hypothesis is something that you say that, hey, this might be right, right? Now, uh, you might say that Pluto is a planet. There was a time in the world where everyone agreed Pluto is a planet and then, I don't know, it all went to bonkers. People don't, uh, you know, there's one side of the community that says Pluto is still worthy to be a planet. There's another side of the community who says, no, Pluto is too small, too far uh, to be a planet, right? So having an hypothesis that says, hey, Pluto is a planet, it's not going to be a wild guess. It's going to be you actually having to say, hey, Pluto is a planet for so and so and so reasons, correct? So to give out those reasons, you must perform some analysis. And what do you think, what type of analysis do you think goes into this? Multivariate analysis, right? So again, whenever you're thinking about all of these things, it is very, very important to first of all analyze. When you say data analysis, it's not just taking a data, analyzing and giving something out. There is way more sophistication to it as you can see on your screen. And this is very important for all of you all to understand. All right, now that we understood the various objectives of multivariate analysis, I think it is high time we dive right into the heart of the topic to actually understand what are some of the various techniques that we have in today's world to help us with multivariate analysis, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's many, many techniques of how one can go on to perform multivariate analysis. And as a data analyst, it is very helpful for you to know what each and every one of these techniques is. Now, a common question I get whenever I'm teaching these techniques is do we have to know all of this to an extreme amount of detail not really because whenever you, you you're given a problem statement you will be using various techniques out there let's be honest but it doesn't add any sort of value for you to be a thorough expert in 100 different techniques when uh, you might be just using three or four right give it a thought so whenever you require any sort of technique know what it is know where it is used know this uh, it's very important for you to understand how to use the technique to solve the problem. That is where all the uh, magic lies in, right? So let's quickly brush through, let's quickly summarize some of these really popular techniques that we have in today's world uh, where multivariate analysis is popularly performed, right? The first one on your list is multiple regression analysis. Multiple regression analysis or MRA as it's called is again one of the most commonly uh, used multivariate techniques out there. Why? Because it is uh, it is very effective even from a non-technical perspective and at the end of the day when you're performing multiple regression, right, it just solves all of your problem because it will uh, help you assess the relationship that exists between one single dependent variable and multiple independent variables out there. There is one single dependent variable there's multiple independent variables around it. So if there's any sort of relationship that exists, this analysis method will 
show that out in bold to you right so uh, when you have this kind of an ability where uh, you know you have one dependent variable multiple independent variables here you can determine a linear relationship very very easily and eventually to let's just say we are trying to use this technique to uh, predict tomorrow's weather it's going to be very easy the, what is the goal here the weather what are the parameters that will help for the weather uh, precipitation pollution uh, humidity all of those factors right so you're building a linear relationship between that and once you go on to actually do it well you can you can predict tomorrow's weather right simple that is multiple regression analysis now coming to talk about discriminant analysis discriminant analysis is again another very popular multivariate analysis technique but here uh, what we what we do things are slightly different here because what we doing is we are trying to classify all of our observations and we just creating multiple tiny groups subgroups bunches whatever you want to call it right so we just take all the observations and we split it out into different groups now we can have a function that is that will basically classify all these observations that we have right now once you have observations you divide it into groups you will know roughly vaguely what each of the groups or how each of those groups will behave and then writing a function on it to make sure that you can you know you can sit and classify the observations for sure you're no longer guessing you have a structured way of actually performing that assessment you can do it right so it will give you this ability to understand what variables will have more impact on the function at hand now again think about the diabetes example that i've been talking about right how do you know which has the biggest factor does having really high blood pressure cause diabetes does having uh, really bad blood sugar levels cause it you know you cannot say you have a bad age or something uh you can say maybe you have a bad body mass index right personal fitness maybe if that isn't up to the mark and if you if you are obese or very obese or something like that how do you know which of these has the highest impact right using discriminant analysis you actually have the ability to say hey this uh, particular feature this particular uh, uh, point of analysis might have that much that much of an impact on your solution and that is very very important for you to analyze as an important technique we have today right and then coming to another multivariate analysis technique which is super popular which is basically called manova manova or multivariate analysis of variance is again a super popular technique which is used to assess the a relationship between note this this is used to assess the relationship between many categorical independent variables and multiple numerical dependent variables independent variables are categorical uh, dependent variables are numerical right now when when is when is this the case give it a thought right i i actually want you guys to analyze when is the situation where you will have a categorical independent variable and a numerical dependent variable right uh, to to give you a to, to give you a hint to take a look at it it is very popularly used to assess the the market trends we know how the market works right it's just charts up and down but when you have to analyze how much something is varying with respect to another point you're going to have to take a look at the variance and once you have to perform analysis on the variance and if you have to perform multivariate analysis of variance it's still called as manova right it's a it's a very simple generalization of what the technique is what the technique does but this point where it says this is the relationship it will help you assess this relationship between uh, many categorical independent variables and a and uh, metric based dependent variables this is something that you guys should understand right coming on to the next technique which is factor analysis right now factor analysis is also another very very popular technique now you might be uh, uh, you know taking a look at the trend here i'm saying that this technique is very very popular because data analysis is such a huge domain out there each of these techniques have become popular because they are very good at solving certain problems for multiple domains out there right now factor analysis is very different from all the various other techniques that we have today because see in the other techniques that you will have you will we are trying to find relationships between variables right dependent independent categorical numerical all of that but here what we trying to do is we are trying to understand the structure that is hidden in the data rather than say hey i want a relationship and uh, you know when i say i want a relationship basically i mean the data uh, point uh, you know finding relationships between each other right now that is very important for you to understand and i bet that you have heard about factor analysis right pca principal component analysis i am sure you might have read about it heard about it or something and in fact what you should know at this moment of time is that pca is a very very good example of actually performing factor analysis a point where you say hey i want to understand the structure of it i want to understand why the data uh, uh, you know why the variables behave the way it is and how is it linking to each other when you are uh, hunting for that structure rather than just looking for a uh, for looking for the relationship between the variables you know what to use now right 
factor analysis. And then we have another type of uh, multivariate analysis technique here, or it's basically called as cluster analysis. Now, cluster, what does the name cluster remind you of, right? Because in this particular case, when we are performing cluster analysis, we take a very, very large data set and we actually break the large data set into smaller chunks, smaller groups of individual elements, right? When we are Performing cluster analysis, that's what we do. We take large data, we cut it out into small pieces and we analyze uh, those small pieces and we try to understand, is there any sort of similarity when we're trying to cluster this? Is there any other characteristics which will group it into clusters, right? I'll give you an example. Think about apples, right? Uh, if I, the, the fruit apple, not the brand. Uh, now, whenever you're thinking about the apple fruit, there are so many ways. There's a, there's a raw apple, there is a ripe apple, right? The raw apple is usually green in color. The ripe apple is usually red in color. Now, what if I say, hey, can you can you divide this? Can you cluster these apples based on if they have uh, if they have ripened or not? What will you look at? You look at the colors. Hey, this is green, unripe. This is red, ripe. You're going to do that, right? So it's a characteristic that you're trying to assess. Similarly, when you have so many different things, especially market segmentation analysis, uh, where you will have a lot of these categories where, you know, your data is huge. It's absolutely huge, but you can uh, try to group it down, try to simplify it and understand, hey, these are similar points of data that I can club. These are some of the characteristics which are making the data points look similar. So let me club these as well, right? And then later you perform analysis on it. How simple is that? But you have to understand one thing, ladies and gentlemen, uh, factor analysis and cluster analysis, as we are discussing right now, these are very very, very popular, very powerful. And uh, people have started to realize that it is way, it, it pulls way more weight than people initially thought. So these are extremely popular uh, for today, right? The next thing that we're going to take a look at is some of the various advantages of multivariate analysis that we can have today. Now to talk about the advantages of multivariate analysis, it's a small problem. Because there's a ton of advantages that you can talk about, right? There's huge number of advantages which I can go on and on and on. But to actually simplify all of my thoughts into five, six very good points is what you see on your screen right now. The biggest advantage of multivariate analysis is for a fact that it will help you arrive at accurate data-driven conclusions and insights. Uh, there's two ways of coming to a conclusion. One, you can guess it. The second one, you can have a conclusion and you can say, I have data to prove that this is the conclusion. Which would you pick? If you were a client, if you were an individual, if you're an enterprise user, which would you pick? You would, of course, want data-driven insights, data-driven conclusion. It will help you arrive at that, right? Not just data-driven conclusion, but accurate, super accurate data-driven conclusions, right? Now, the next point where multivariate analysis actually helps is to find out if there's anything wrong with the data, to find out if there's any anomalies in the data and also to understand if, uh, to, to understand what, how level of, what is the level of consistency that you have with respect to data out there, right? Now, this is very, very important for all of you all to understand because people usually think that, hey, multivariate analysis, you have multiple variables, you analyze it, you give some conclusions, you're done. Not really. It'll help you in a lot more places. Think about the third point, feature engineering. Feature engineering is actually a concept where you will try to analyze what parameters have what sort of impact on your outcome. Very similar to multivariate analysis, don't you think? Or in fact, it's an initial step to multivariate analysis if you take a look at it from another uh, perspective as well. So telling that, hey, these are the features which will help me. Age is a feature that will help in diabetes. Uh, genetics is also a feature that will help in diabetes, right? So you have multiple features that you're going to say that this will uh, have, uh, you know, an outcome. This will have an effect on the outcome, right? That helps again. Feature engineering is extremely critical critical for machine learning. So give it a thought of how, how advantageous this is, right? And then data cleaning. Data cleaning is very, very important because at the end of the day, again, if you consider a machine learning application, if you, uh, you know, if you just provide unclean data to a machine learning algorithm, it is not going to realize. It doesn't know what a car looks like. It doesn't know what a ball looks like. It, it has absolutely no idea, right? It understands only zeros and ones. And through structure, it builds and understands and has a uh, certain meaning. But if your data is unclean, uh, let's just say you're trying to collect the patient data. Someone has asked, what is your blood group, right? So some person by mistake, instead of typing in their blood group, they've written their date of birth or they've written their mobile number. 
right think about it it can happen it will happen right we humans after all so when something like that happens and when you know that uh, you know the data data is incorrect and as soon as you feed it to your machine learning algorithm it doesn't know it's wrong what it's going to do is it's going to use that to learn incorrectly right it's not its fault at the end of the day but that will happen so with respect to using multivariate analysis where you can clean and pre process your data better helps a million folds for all the processes which come down the line after analysis right superb take a look at the last point the last point says handling underfitting and overfitting underfitting and overfitting are the absolute it will almost feel like hey these are small problems but these have the biggest impacts on the uh, outcome of whatever it is being done right underfitting is when your machine learning model cannot really uh, go into the depth of analyzing and assessing uh, what's going on with the data so it really cannot dig deep enough to find out any structure pattern or anything but overfitting is reverse overfitting it has dug so much into your uh, problem it has dug so much into your data that instead of looking at useful data it has started looking at noise it has it has started picking up things which are which might be of no use uh, to your outcome and what does that do that both in underfitting and overfitting it ensures at the end of the day your overall performance is coming down your machine learning model is not going to be performing well why because it's doing all of these things right one in one case it has absolutely no idea what sort of data to pick up and work on where in the other uh, kind of case where it's working so hard at a granular level that it does not know it is not able to differentiate between noise and it is not able to differentiate and it is not able to pick up anything useful in both the cases right so to avoid all of that to help handle it again you have multivariate analysis okay guys fantastic we've come to a point wherein we can actually take a look at that fantastic diabetes demonstration that i just mentioned to you all and let me quickly jump to google collab google collab is nothing but a jupyter notebook that is hosted on the google cloud platform now you guys can code this in any other uh, uh, you know any other uh, choice of id that you want your pie charm you can use the regular jupyter notebook it's basically a simple jupyter notebook but it's on the google cloud right so let's quickly get into that all right guys as you can see i've opened up my google collab out here and all we're trying to do is we're trying to perform the diabetes detection we're trying to understand how we can get a machine learning model to figure out what are the various factors what are the various points of analysis that will eventually lead uh, to the result right uh, now ladies and gentlemen the goal here one thing you have to understand is that the goal here is not to show you how easy of course one point you have to understand that to achieve uh, this particular demonstration it's very very easy but i understand that some of you all might not be uh, uh, you know might not be up to speed with respect to these libraries such as numpy pandas matplotlib seaborn so let me quickly give you a glance of what's happening with respect to each point of code but you actually try to analyze and assess the uh, uh, mva the multivariate uh, analysis aspect of it right well the first step of any analysis out there uh, we're going to be have we're going to have to import all the libraries right numpy is called as numerical python it's basically used to perform all these numerical related activities when we are working with python pandas will give us two fantastic data types it's called as uh, the pandas series and the pandas data frames which are again very very important for us to work with and then we have matplotlib and seaborn matplotlib and seaborn are critical libraries when it comes to data visualization if you have to plot anything uh, with respect to using graphs charts and all of that which we are going to be using in this uh, small demo so you're going to require that and then we have sklearn sklearn also stands stands for scikit learn which you might have heard it's a very very important library for or machine learning right now as soon as i hit this play button it's very simple to actually work with uh, google collab here now as soon as i hit the play button it's going to take a second and as soon as it stops basically it has executed this right now all these libraries are ready for me to use now the next step is for me to actually talk to you about the uh, data set right to show you what the data looks like but if i just hit play on it it's going to give me an error now it's going to say hey where is that file that you're asking me to open well it's actually in my local computer here let me open up these files now i have to upload it to the google cloud so that it understands right now the entire python environment is on the google cloud now that i've uploaded it i'm going to close it i'm going to hit play again and as soon as i hit play again done we have actually uploaded our data set our data set is ready so let's quickly take a look at what the data set is all about now i've now i've printed the first 10 patients worth of data now every uh, row you see here is one patient's data okay so we have multiple uh, ones we're going to see how much we have in a while now 
what are these various factors that cause uh, that cause diabetes right one is your glucose levels uh, the blood pressure levels what is your skin thickness what is your insulin level what is your body mass index what is your age and eventually the last column will be the outcome column right now if the outcome is zero uh, it means this person does not have diabetes. If the outcome is one, it means that person has been diagnosed with diabetes, right? So we already know. We know that, hey, this is the detail of the person. And if the person has diabetes or not, we know. But what we are going to do when we are supplying the data to our machine learning model is we're going to just remove the last column and say, hey, now you predict if there is any sort of, uh, uh, use your multivariate analysis result to see if you can find out correctly if the person has diabetes or not, right? So that's about it. Uh, BMI, again, when you think about it, I think 25 is the normal value. And I think about 28 or 30 is something is where you are called as an obese person, anything less than 25 uh, uh you know if it is like around 20 or something your mal new uh, malnutrition or something along the lines of that right you guys know this now the important part that you, you have to be asking me right now is hey okay so you just printed out it for the data for 10 people how many people do we have in total to analyze all of this data as you already know to perform multivariate analysis we require a large amount of data correct Yes, in this case, as you can see, for each of the patients, uh, for, for each of the columns that we have, which is showing a parameter, which is showing a variable, we have 768 entries. What this tells me is that there are 768 patients worth of data that I'm looking at right now. Okay, so if there are 768 people who are, uh, you know, going on to uh, giving me some data points out there, what are some of the things that I can tell as of now with respect to a statistical description? Well, the first, uh, 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 the row here it says count count is basically telling me how many entries there are with respect to that column as you can see it's 768 everywhere so we don't have any empty uh, columns or rows out here and then it is giving me the mean of it mean is basically the average right now in the entire 768 people you can see that the body mass index average is actually 32 which means that Overall, there are, uh, if you consider this, uh, the data set in general, this is a hypothetical data set, the body mass index is slightly higher than what we would prefer, which is around 25, 26, 27, right? You can take a look at all that. You can take a look at the standard deviation. You can find the minimum values. You can find out what is the value at the 25th percentile, 50th quartile, 75th quartile, and eventually even the maximum value uh, as well. Right. So there are various things that you can figure out from this looking at it. As soon as you take a look at it, you'll be like, oh, OK, so this is what is happening uh, with respect to all of these uh, individual entries. Right. This is uh, taking your entire data set and instead of walking you through each of those 768 entries, this is me giving you a statistical aspect of it. Say, hey. Look at this. With respect to one command, right? Data.describe is all that we use. If with respect to data.describe, done. We just used it and we realized that we can find out so many things about our data set, right? Now, the next thing is the part where we'll actually be performing some pre-processing with the data. Now, thankfully, in my case, I do not need to perform any sort of uh, pre-processing here because all of these values, wherever it's, it's false, it means that there's only numerical values that are found. Is NA is basically telling, is it not a number? Is it anything apart from a number? So wherever it says false, it means it's a number, correct? Now, again, as I told you, right, when, so when I ask someone, hey, what is your body mass index? Please import it into this column. They might have written O positive blood group, right? Of course, they don't do it on purpose, but it is done by mistake. And if it says true here in many of the point of cases, it means that, that there is a wrong entry there that you have to go and fix it up. Now, in my case, as I told you, this data set, this hypothetical data set is already cleared. I don't have to perform any sort of pre-processing on it. The next thing that I can jump directly is to understand this concept called correlation. Correlation is a beautiful concept, especially for multivariate analysis, because here it will tell you how much of dependency exists between two variables right first of all take a look at the heat map on the right if it is uh, of course there's positive correlation there's negative correlation all of that to simplify it for your case we're just going to be talking about positive correlation here now whenever there is this chart that starts from 0, 0.0 all the way to 1 you can see the color lightens when the color lightens in the legend it's basically telling you that whatever if it is at that color that is the amount of positive dependency the correlation that exists between uh, these two variables right for example example, 
pregnancies and age right age is your pregnancy is your so this is the box that we're talking about you can see that this is light in color compared to all the other boxes right so pregnancy and age has a good amount of correlation there and wherein the uh, uh, you know you could figure it out just by looking at your data now you might be looking at the diagonal element elements and saying hey those are white does it mean it's exactly equal yes it is exactly equal i'll tell you why it is white because if i have to compare the value of glucose now this is white what are we comparing it with let me scroll down i'm comparing it with glucose itself glucose compared to glucose for any person if it is like 300 versus 300 isn't it exactly the same thing yes similarly for blood pressure skin thickness insulin bmi all of these different parameters you have to take a look at it wherein each and every one of those when you compare it with the exact same thing it's always going to be 100 percent equal right so all the diagonal elements will always be uh, uh you know uh, be white in color right so you can you can analyze various points here for example take a look at insulin and skin thickness insulin has some sort of relationship with skin thickness because this is a lighter color compared to all the shades around it right so like this you can actually sit for a couple of minutes try to analyze and try to write down what are some of these uh, correlations which are which will be very important for you to later not only understand these are the variables that have the outcome with respect to correlation you can say these are the variables that have so and so outcome right you can give attach a numerical metric to it to say hey uh, you know pregnancies are 80% related to or age factors or something like that. You can always go on to perform uh, all of that with respect to a simple correlation matrix. Now we know that we have 768 people. How many people? Uh, how many people do we have who have no diabetes? Right. As soon as a couple of lines of code, three or four lines of very simple logic will tell me that there are 500 people who don't have diabetes. Another piece of code tells me that there are, of course, if there are 500 people who don't have diabetes, it is 268 people who have diabetes. Now you might be saying, "Hey, wait a minute! I didn't understand. How did you figure it out?" Let me scroll up to the data set, and you can see this last column one and zero, one and zero, right? So all I have to do is I have to filter everything here if uh, I just have to pick up everything that is one and count how many are there I have to put everything which is zero on the other side count how many are there that will give me the total number of people who have diabetes and who do not have diabetes right that's all I did but if you still want a simpler explanation as always with the help of data visualization you can take a look at it if the outcome is zero it means the person does not have diabetes if the outcome is one it means the person has diabetes now you can see that it it is a sharp mark at 500 means 500 people don't have diabetes and here are somewhere around 268 people roughly around 268 to 70 people have diabetes right now you can just look at this graph and in th within two seconds you can figure it out uh, if you're a person who says oh i don't really like to li write all of this code just to find that out two seconds create a uh, uh, you know try to create a plot and you will have all the details in front of you right the next couple of steps are pretty simple now uh, multivariate analysis is where now now is where machine learning takes over a bit the next thing that we need to do is we need to break the data apart into two pieces one is the training data set and the other one is the testing data set why is this done well this is done to make sure that you know we have brand new data that our machine learning algorithm can test later on it's just like your college examinations you read using your textbooks you close your textbooks and eventually go write your examination from your memory why is that done that's done to see how you have learned what it is that you have exactly learned from those books we want you to reproduce your learning right similarly if we divide stuff out into two pieces and if we hide one piece for a later uh, verification stage we can understand and we we'll know that it has learned it better right because if i give it the training uh, data right now and later send the same training data again it will give me 100 percent result it will say hey everything is correct that's not what we want right it's it's like having your textbook next to your examination we don't want that so basically what we're trying to do is when we are providing the data to our machine learning algorithm that last column which said outcome where it had the details of if a person has diabetes or not we're going to drop it we're going to remove it straight away and we're going to break the data into two pieces one one chunk one basket consists of 80 percent of data while the other basket consists of 20 percent of data now for all the people who are not used to machine learning if you're a person who's thinking oh i'm going to require hundreds of lines to perform machine learning not really as soon as i click this uh, particular code snippet here these two lines that you see uh, l equal to logistic regression and model fitting is a place where we actually 
provided it with respect to the training data and as soon as this is done the model has actually finished learning everything the next thing is where i give it that test where i tell it hey here is new data tell me if you can predict this correctly and with again one line of code that is done and after that you have one more all of these are basically statistical concepts uh, it's the measures of accuracy here uh, there are concepts such as true positives false positive true negative false negative those will actually be used to assess and gauge the performance of your machine learning algorithm but for simplicity's sake let's have an accuracy score uh, it says the accuracy score is 74.67% all that it is trying to tell us is this machine learning algorithm could figure out what are the various uh, factors that's going to lead to analysis that's going to lead to diabetes and we made sure to take a look at it manually with respect to performing mva over using the correlation uh, once we did that we figured out how many people have diabetes how many people don't have diabetes we printed a small graph we used logistic regression and at the end we printed out an accuracy score to say hey by not only just performing a uh, uh, multivariate analysis i have also used the result of multivariate analysis to feed it into a machine learning algorithm and get the machine learning algorithm to predict if something if it can find out if the patient has diabetes or not how fantastic is this right we started out by thinking hey this demo will only be talking about multivariate analysis we also made sure to complete have a bigger view at the picture to tell you not uh, to tell you exactly not just how uh, multivariate analysis works but again whenever you think about where it is used this is where it is commonly used it is attached with either machine learning or deep learning to drive insights based on those results right so it's very important for you to understand that. and as i just told you right the goal here for you to is actually to understand the structure to understand how we try to attack this particular problem and solve it and of course there might be some of you uh, who are watching this course right now who might be saying hey i don't know why you have written this exact line like this yes you're going to require a bit of introduction to python to understand how python syntax is written uh, to actually go on to figure all of this out in detail but that's not that's not the goal here the goal here was to show you a uh, uh, multivariate analysis and to also give you an extended view about using machine learning there as well well guys with this we have come to the end of the course thank you so much for watching we started this one out by taking a look at understand what data analysis basically is once we figured out what data analysis is we took a look at the various types of data analysis we could perform once we understood the various types of analysis again with very good examples we homed in on multivariate analysis we started understanding what is multivariate analysis where it is used what are some of its popular applications what are its very good techniques that are used everywhere around us what are the advantages of it uh, and we also made sure to take a look at practically implementing the concept to showcase to you guys that you know uh, in a practical situation this is how you would be performing multivariate analysis now there's so many other use cases there's so many it's it's it has literally an, or an almost infinite outcome wherein you can find a problem statement and perform multivariate analysis on it right because usually that is the case that is how it happens in the real world and the real world has realized it and that's the reason why we are seeing data analysis to be blowing up like we have never seen before because people realize now that having data performing analysis like this will not only help them uh, clear out any uh, uh, you know something might have gone wrong in the past and you're trying to fix it but it is also giving you an ability to forecast what's happening in the future and not a lot of domains give you that and that is the power of data analysis right okay guys superb thank you so much for watching my name is anirudh rao i hope you are clear with everything that i have covered in this particular course as always see you on the next one right have a good day cheers guys if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet i want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell this is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from great learning and of course guys if you enjoy this video show us some love and do like this video knowledge increases by sharing right so make sure you share this video with your friends colleague and everyone who can make use of it and at the end of it make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and i'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments